I'm Zoe Sheridan and it's a beautiful Melbourne day. The sky is blue, a little chill, but it's perfect because I'm sitting with a fabulously talented woman who I have so much in common with, M. Rasciano. You have so much in common because you're fabulously talented as well. That is She's right. So modest. Yes, I know. <laughs> We both have two beautiful daughters. Mm -hmm. We both uh, had them whilst doing breakfast radio in Adelaide, mm -hmm. for part of it anyway. Well, mm -hmm. I had them in Sydney, but did some breakfast radio in Adelaide. But I was wondering if you actually had to breastfeed on air. I did, I breastfed on air. I had the baby in the, well, I went back to weeks back to work six weeks after giving birth. <gasps> See, I at least got three months. No, six I, weeks. The day I gave birth was my last show on air. <gasps> oh, Lord. <laughs> I went from the studio to the hospital and uh, gave birth and then six weeks later... From the studio to mm. the hospital. I can't believe six weeks. I know. Well, because then you, um, Em and I were talking before and you were telling me that you had postnatal depression. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was really postnatal. I mean, it happened to be after you gave birth, but that's because you would have been exhausted. I was. You would have been I was. overtired. Yeah. Like, well, in hindsight, going back six weeks after I gave birth was a real mistake. But uh, because there's no paid maternity leave in this country, mm. which is an embarrassment. Mm. Uh, hopefully I, that's changing. Well, though. hopefully, but mm. I was the sole income earner because my job's so demanding, my husband was with the girls. Mm. But the postnatal didn't come on until my second was eight, month old, eight months old. Mm. I fell into a hole. But up until then, that year I bought a house, I got married, I had a baby. Wow. And after all that had done, I was lying in bed one morning and just thought, I've got nothing, no more excuses as to why I'm feeling so bad. Yeah. And that's when my husband said, you know, you've got to go to your, the doctor, I can't help you. A lot of women do it. And that's why women's health is so close to my heart and I'm so passionate mm. about it because we put ourselves last. Yeah. I was last on the priority list. Yeah. I wasn't, at the end of the day, the tank was so empty, it was ridiculous, and I would lie yeah. in bed. And I had insomnia on top of it all. I confessed on air. I, I, I had to take the pressure off myself, so I decided to get on air and with breakfast radio is zany and wacky and mm. you don't normally the hosts don't normally go into the serious sides of their lives but I thought if I can help one woman not yeah. feel as crappy as I did then any embarrassment I'm going to suffer is worth it yeah so I got on air and it was the scariest thing I've ever done and I cried and it was it was really hard it yeah. was hard to not be in control um my postnatal depression then actually developed into depression yeah um which I you know, I, I battled with, and, and it is, it's a battle. You, you, you fight it every day. Mm -hmm. It's a fight every day. And, and I was medicated. I was in therapy three times a week. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I couldn't find joy in anything. I think that's the best way to describe the way depression effect, affected me. I just couldn't find any joy in, and you'd lie there thinking, how dare you? You've got beautiful, healthy kids, a husband who loves you, an amazing job, mm -hmm. great friends. How dare you feel like, you know, the world is caving in on you? And that's, mm -hmm. that's how I felt. I couldn't find joy in anything. Mm. So, are you still on antidepressants now? Um, no, well I was up until December of last year, but I quit my job in Breakfast Radio. And <laughs> just and then walked. you were okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah, got some decent sleep and I've been off all my meds and pretty much out of therapy for six months, which is good and I'm a much happier person. And so a lot of it was linked to not getting enough sleep. Yeah, totally. I roll out of bed at quarter past eight. We live on the same street as my daughter's primary school. Yeah, that's brilliant. So I've gone from getting up at four o'clock in the morning to now she's late every day. I don't care. No, well, I found a little trick that in winter, sometimes I put on their clean undies and their tights the night before. So that in the morning it saves dressing time. That's brilliant. <laughs> so they That's so good. <laughs> Maybe I can give them breakfast before they go to bed. Yeah. Should I be admitting that right no, now? No, I like that. I Hundreds of women are just getting <laughs> their pens out. Oh my God. <laughs> I've only done it a couple of times. And I have been a lot more organised because my kids were late all the time. So one thing I do do now is make their lunch the, the night, night before, before and put it in the fridge. In I the don't fridge. have that discipline. I know. But I want to be the mother who has the Tupperware containers packed the night before. Yeah, no. I'm the mother going down to the shop five minutes before school starts and buying sushi and buying stuff and just putting it in the backpack. <laughs> no. I'm that mother. I will never be the Tupperware box mother. I know. I well, want to be. So, okay, so effectively <laughs> my kids have nanny fine as a mother. So that wouldn't work because I am the gay man trapped in a woman's body. And so my kids have that already. So that wouldn't work. My kids yeah. need someone like Mrs. Doubtfire, someone who doesn't wear fishnets to drop them off to school, you know? Someone like, who's actually yeah. a man dressed in woman's clothing. I, I've turned up. 
<laughs> I turned up to my daughter's school to pick her up and she said, and I quote, what the hell are you wearing? <laughs> yeah, nice. My eight-year-old. What was wrong with my tutu today? Yeah. Tutu and combat boots, all the mummies are doing it. They yeah. were not. Tell me what happened on Australian Idol. Oh. How did that come about? Um, That's hilarious. Okay. Well, that was Australian Idol was 2004, so lot, many, many years ago. I am. What se what session of Australian Idol was it? Season. Oh, it's only second season. Yeah. So Anthony Kalia, Casey Donovan, <gasps> Ricky that Lee one. that year. Yeah. Wow. So that was a complete accident, really. I was living in Adelaide. Um, my husband was working for the Power, and I just went along and auditioned and kept getting further. And, but I was the storyline. I wasn't a great singer. I was just the mother of two who didn't know she could sing and cried a fair bit and was a bit <laughs> mental. And I am mental, so I can say that. I'm in that minority group. Um, so, yeah, went along and came night, ridiculously enough. So That's brilliant. It was really, it was really soul fortifying it really tested me on many different fronts yeah I was 24 and um, was away from my two-year-old for a long time yeah um, but yeah it was it was good. you were young 24 I was young. Wow. I was young but there was like Casey was only 16 and Marley another girl she was 16 as well so it, it was good did you was have tough. to live in that idle house we together? lived in the idle house wow everyone hated each other our year too oh really? it got nasty because oh, Anthony but... hadn't come out yet and he was quite antsy about it and I knew he was gay because he was wearing two pairs of socks, for God's sake, so he didn't get black fluff on his feet. <laughs> and I went up to him and I said, you are a queen. And he said, no, I'm not. Yeah. I said, yes, you are. I know a gay man at 10 paces. <laughs> he was in this blow drying his hair, putting on his two pairs of socks. And I said, like, you're a gay man. Uh, Mark Holden's just weird. It's just a unit. He is. You, you can know, quote him. Um, Mark Holden is a unit. When I was probably about, I don't know, 13 or 14, he was in a movie called Blue Fire Lady. Really? Oh, where good he, name. Um, Blue Fire tra Lady. Trained horses or something, and I actually had a crush on him. <laughs> yeah. I was hysterical. Oh, yeah. Who was, who was the poster boy on your wall? Come on, spit it out. Fred Savage from The Wonder Years. <gasps> Fred Savage from The Wonder Years. That's awesome. I used to dream that Kevin Arnold would come and take me away. Good things come in small packages. I do. I do. How tall are you? Tall. Yeah, there you go. And, so and I'm just tall useless. packages. There you go. Wow, good recovery. <laughs> that was really Thank smooth. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Bless you. Bless. Thank you. No worries.